all wired up. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Good morning, everyone. How are you all feeling? You feeling good? Yes. Awesome. Okay. So um, I have a, 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 just a, a request, uh, a small request before I start. So I'm sitting last night uh, at a speaker's dinner with my friend Luca. And I'm asking him, so are you, you know, I'm opening the WordCamp tomorrow. It's like the first session. Are you going to be there? He's like, of course I'm going to be there. You know, you have to, you have, I have to be there to make sure that you wake up my audience. He's your next speaker <laughs> after me. So please, please look alive during his session before, because if you don't, like he's going to be very grumpy at me. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So, um, Today, WordPress is super powerful. It kind of powers more than 24, I think, already uh, percent of the web, which is a huge chunk of, uh, of, our, of the, the websites that we use on daily, uh, um, everyday basis. And um, its rapid growth, it grew very rapidly. It was like overnight almost in a couple of years. And its rapid growth is um, owed to some extent to uh, how it approached localization and globalization. Um, it speaks a lot of languages, and today I want to tell you a little bit about uh, how that happened, how that happens, who translates it, and uh, how you as developers, plugin developers, team developers, or like owners of WordPress businesses, you can take advantage of the same approach that made WordPress uh, you know, reach the 24% of the web it has today. Uh, going to quickly introduce myself, even though Ramkus did like a semi-okay job with this uh, before. Uh, <laughs> my name is uh, Petya. I live in Sofia, Bulgaria, and uh, I work for a UK uh, WordPress agency called uh, Human Made. We mostly do enterprise uh, WordPress work, which means like big websites with like high traffic websites on WordPress. Um, so media is like one of my passions, one of my passions, and the other one is uh, WordPress. And uh, WordPress has been my passion for about uh, four years now. And I first started translating um, probably around 2011 when I just noticed we needed. I was working for a WordPress agency, and we needed a WordPress for a client side. And uh, our clients didn't really speak English. I was back in Bulgaria then. So our clients didn't speak English, and they couldn't make sense of neither the front or the back end of WordPress. So I kind of had to go and like see uh, uh, if WordPress was translated in Bulgarian. And it was, but only partially. And uh, also, some bits of that translation sounded so weird. They didn't really sound human. <laughs> Um, so I started translating and digging into uh, and digging into WordPress in Bulgarian, and uh, little by little got to know the Polyglots team. Uh, that's the team that translates WordPress, and that is the team that I have grown to love and help on an everyday basis uh, these days. So today we're going to uh, go through three things. We're going to talk about WordPress and languages a little bit. That's like kind of the dull part. Um, but it's like useful information and it's good for you to know, uh, to know it. And then we're going to define IATN and L10N, which are the abbreviations for internationalization and localization. Those are the processes that are kind of related to how WordPress reaches global audiences. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how you can take the same approach WordPress did to help your business grow. So, WordPress and languages. Um, here's how much WordPress grew in just uh, like it, in its 12 years of uh, existence. Kind of the last four of them was it grew super super rapidly. You can see it going from like 15.8 percent to like 24 percent. And that's just like three years. It's like what seems like three years. Um, so 10% growth. How do you do that? It's, WordPress is actually not the only project that grew so rapidly thanks to localization. Uh, Facebook and Twitter and also nowadays Booking.com. Like Facebook grew to like billion, uh, billions of users thanks to its uh, approach to global culture 
and thanks to uh, its very greatly developed tools that allowed its community to translate it into their own languages. These are the top languages of the world. There are like more than 4,000, even though um, there are more, more than 4,000 languages spoken, still spoken, even though some of them are spoken by like, how many were there? Like seven, eight <laughs> ten people? Uh, um, but the top languages, uh, at the top of that chart, is not English. Like English is not really the most spoken language of the world. It's the business language of the world of sorts, but it's not even close to being at the top of this chart. Chinese is the most spoken language of the world. Spanish is m more widely spread than English. And English is like somewhere in the third, between the th third and fourth position, depending on like the year. And um, when you think about software, you think about English. It's kind of inevitable. Like software is kind of written in English. The, uh, the, the basic language that software speak, speaks in English. Same goes for WordPress. Uh, WordPress was forked from uh, another open source, pro uh, source project called uh, B2. And um, WordPress is in English because my, like my, Matt Mullingweg and Mike Little, its co-founders, are both native English speakers. So <clears throat> WordPress does speak English, but it kind of, it's kind of not enough for a software or for a product to, go, uh, to grow globally. And that's why nowadays WordPress speaks more than 100 languages. They realized that early enough and WordPress became available for translation after the efforts of a couple of people that actually made uh, the founders aware of the fact that WordPress cannot grow if it doesn't have like uh, an approach to localization. There are around 100 56 locales, WordPress locales right now. I'll get to what this is a little bit later, but 156 locales, 67 of which are fully translated. So you can use WordPress in 67 languages uh, as like a full, nice, full experience. And there are new locales being requested every day for languages that we don't cover yet so well, for Asian languages, for the Indian languages, for um, for languages in parts of the world, for languages I hadn't even known existed before I started doing this. It's super fascinating. We have a Dutch locale, as Remka said, which is like the, the Dutch localization team has been <laughs> around for far longer than I have and like super amazing, and they're doing super amazing work. So I'd like to just give them a round of applause. It's like, see so many of them here, it's Remco's Chantal's over there uh, and so many others, they're making sure, you know, uh, WordPress is reaching, um, is, is reaching people that, don't, that are not that familiar with English. And we have a Frisian, Frisian locale as well, which is great and it actually needs some help. So if you guys really speak it, go help, help Remco's translate WordPress in it because it's been stuck for a while, right? Um, so, um, these are the top languages of WordPress. And those are based on the, the, the languages, like the most uh, active downloads of WordPress in other languages. Uh, WordPress is naturally uh, most popular in English, but then Japanese is the foreign language that uh, WordPress users mostly download. And uh, then there's German, and then there's Spanish, and Chinese, Arabic, Portuguese, we have two locales there for Brazilian Portuguese and for uh, usual Portuguese. And um, more and more people every day are using WordPress in ang languages uh, other than English. This was a very important milestone for WordPress, uh, for global WordPress. In uh, WordPress 4.0 in 2014, for the first time, non-English downloads surpassed English downloads, which meant that people downloaded English, uh, sorry, the downloaded WordPress in languages other than English more than they downloaded the original software. <laughs> Funnily enough, uh, with 
the improvements that were made for localization of WordPress, it's become very, very hard to nowadays track how many people use, in, uh, use WordPress in languages other than English. Because nowadays, as you know, you can install WordPress and then choose a language uh, afterwards. Before, you had to go to a Rosetta site or download and download uh, your language packs from there. So it was kind of easier to track all of this. But we know from WordPress 4.0 that uh, the international impact of WordPress is super huge. This is a little bit more numbers uh, for WordPress 4.0. Uh, almost a third of all the, of all the downloads of WordPress 4.0 uh, for the international downloads were for Japanese. And, um, like uh, 400,000 and a little bit more were in German. And uh, what explains um, why people download WordPress in some place more than another is uh, the impact English has on that community, right? So if the locals don't really speak good English, WordPress is going to be downloaded more in the native language than in English. <clears throat> Japan, I don't know if you guys know, but Japan has like one of the most active uh, and rapidly growing WordPress communities. They love WordPress there. They have a huge community in like so many towns. And, uh, and also, they don't really communicate in English that much. We're trying to, we, we've been trying to get the Japanese team involved in the polyglots more and more. But it turned out that they prefer to speak their na native language. They're not that comfortable with, with English at all. So that's why they translate everything the moment it gets out. Same goes for Chinese and a lot of the uh, other Asian languages. So how does it all happen? And what are low chaos? Uh, a little bit of theory here, uh, just so you're acquainted with the term. So from geographic perspective, a locale is a place, but from a language perspective and from software perspective, uh, perspective it's an ID that defines a language and a place which means that uh, it also defines, besides defining the language, it also devi defines where the language is spoken and uh, all, like a little bit more uh, information like uh, numeric systems, uh, text orientation. Uh, a lot of languages are right to left uh, orientated and also horizontally or vertically aligned. So uh, a locale is kind of all that into one ID. Um, IATN and L10N are the terms that are related to uh, globalizing WordPress and a uh, very short description. IATN internationalization means that's, that's a term for developers that means creating translatable, translatable software. That means applying a set of terms, a set of rules when you're developing so that everything that you, that you say in the back end and the front end can be extracted and put into a translation management system for somebody to localize. And localization is translating, and a little bit more, which uh, I'll go in uh, further detail in a bit. But localization uh, of WordPress is done at translatewordpress.org, and it's been a community work for uh, a long time now. And uh, localization means, beyond translating, means adapting a software for the language, but also the place where it, it will be uh, used. Um, so I'm not a developer, and I'm gonna give you like a quick, just a uh, quick um, overview of some resources that you can use if you wanna do WordPress, uh, WordPress uh, internationalization, right? There, uh, there are plugin developers and team developer handbooks that you can use. They have all the rules that are needed. And um, they live here. And um, if you are a developer and you think that you have uh, internationalization all figured out, I have a challenge for you. <laughs> uh, go to this URL. At tinyurl slash uh, WP IATN test. And um, automatic global engineer Alex Kirk prepared a, an awesome IATN test for developers. That also, like if you get it, if you get any answer wrong, will give you the right, like the reason why you got it wrong and uh, the right answer as well. 
So I'd be really curious to, to know how many of you guys get a 9 out of 9. I know that Rarst completely failed that test. Where are you, Rarst? <laughs> there, he, there he is. He completely, I, I am not a developer and I got a higher result than him on that test. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That's for me, right? Not for him. Right? So, okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, so this is uh, something I want to talk a little bit more about. Um, a lot of people think when, when you're localizing your product, you think about like, just putting it out there for people to translate. But localization is a design process. It has, to be, it has to be considered from the beginning when you start thinking about who you want to develop your products for. Uh, translating is, I, I wouldn't say the easy part because it seems easy, but uh, once you dig into it, it gets more and more complicated as any translation editor can tell you. But translation is the straightforward part. What a lot of people miss are the other things, the cultural associations, the signs, the colors, all the things that can impact how a user perceives your software if uh, they're in a specific place. Um, so, the WordPress localization is down, uh, done at translatewordpress.org, as I already told you, and the Polyglots team lives at uh, makewordpress.org Polyglots, and you can see how many people are involved. We have so many people involved in translating WordPress. <coughs> so it is a community <coughs> translated project, which means almost everybody on the team is a volunteer. But there are so many people that are dedicating more time than just like translating a few strings. And uh, that's important. Almost everybody started translating WordPress because they needed it in their language for something, for work, for, for a client, for something like that. Uh, and a lot of the localizations were started by developers. <laughs> and that's my favorite part. And that's the reason why, when I told you before uh, I f like, that I first encountered WordPress in Bulgarian, it didn't really sound human to me. Developers are very literal creatures, you know, they're kind of, they like logic, they, they don't like to like dig very, very deep into like what kind of the meaning of this is. If you're localizing, you know, you're, you're translating. So literal translations can lead to something that uh, doesn't really sound like something a normal user uh, can use. And, um, and that's what Bulgarian, WordPress and Bulgarian sounded to me <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, so I'd like to give you a couple of examples uh, of a sim similar situations. And why I'm doing this is like, there are more and more non-developers getting involved uh, into translating WordPress. I mean, you should consider it too, because more users make a broader perspective um, and uh, they make the experience of everyone in that language after that better. Um, and if, uh, if only developers translated WordPress, <laughs> These are the mistakes that we would have gotten in different languages. Big brands have made them for years. These are just some of my favorite examples. Uh, <laughs> they, they usually, like, especially when they go to like, the Asian countries, they like, really excel. So KFC translated their fing finger licking good uh, slogan into Chinese, like, as we'll eat your fingers off. Um, Course, which is like a soft drink, translated their turn it, lo turn it loose uh, slogan into Spanish as like suffer from diarrhea. And uh, Body by Fisher was translated in Spanish like Corpse by Fisher, that's a uh, uh, General Mother's slogan. And also like Schweppes tonic water uh, turned out to be Schweppes toilet water <laughs> in Italian, which I'm sure Luca is fascinated about, right? Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> literal translations uh, are, not, are not, really, uh, not really that great. And um, more people, more users getting involved and translating and testing kind of helps us avoid this, kind of helps a translation evolve. You should consider that volunteer, like volunteers think uh, when they go to translate WordPress, they think, I, I, I want to help out but then they reach a wall very soon because they don't know the context of things that are uh, being translated. So more users means more feedback, and more feedback means better translations, so you should all go and test the Dutch translations. How many of you are using WordPress in Dutch? Oh, <laughs> that is so awesome. So the rest of you, go use it in Dutch, please. 
uh, even if you don't speak Dutch. <laughs> um, all right. What I meant to say is uh, localization is much more than just translating. You have to have uh, the native culture in mind when you think about where you're translating for. So I have a story, another story. Uh, my friend, my colleague, Jenny Wong, um, she lives in the UK, but she's originally from China. So I went to her place to stay with her for a couple of weeks, um, a couple of months back. And um, because she was giving me shelter, I decided to be nice and bring her flowers. Daisies are my favorite flowers, so I buy her, her this huge bouquet of like large, beautiful white daisies. And I turn up at her doorstep and it's like, Jenny, it's like, brought you flowers. And she's standing and staring at me like, like paler than a ghost. And she says, do you know that white means death in China? You brought me funeral flowers. <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, sorry. So absolutely culturally unaware what that would mean. But after that, I turned out she, she never wore white ever. She's been telling me that she, she doesn't really like wearing white and I had never asked her why. And also, yeah, you guys know this symbol? It's like, this is the symbol for victory in so many countries. Like this will get you a pretty good beating if you show it to somebody in like the UK or Scotland. Uh, because this is like the, the middle finger of the UK. <laughs> uh, and also this thing in Spanish countries, yeah, you're, you're not so telling somebody that they're tip top. You're telling somebody that they're an asshole. So please, like Spanish speaking countries, no. And also like don't even get me started on the whole like numeric systems. Miles, feet, foot, uh, you know, British measure their weight in stones. So that's Something that, like, however funny it seems to us, it's something that has to be considered when you're, when you're making software um, kind of suited, adapted for uh, somebody to use. Like, how many of you have ever made the mistake of using flags for language switchers? We don't use flag for language, sw language switchers because languages are you know, surprisingly spoken <laughs> in many, many countries, even the ones that you kind of consider. So Spanish is a lot more spoken in other parts of the world than in Spain. Same goes for Portuguese. The Brazilians will kill you if you put like a Portuguese flag. It's like Brazilian Portuguese is 10, 10 times bigger in WordPress than, than normal Portuguese in terms of downloads. Um, some, some things like, some things you don't have figured out, even English, is not that straightforward. WordPress speaks English, right? I'll give you another example. <laughs> WordPress speaks English. But like English is spoken not just in the US. English is spoken in, uh, surprisingly, in Great Britain, where it originated from, and also in Australia, New Zealand, and Ireland. The, those are just the five countries that have English as their first official language. So WordPress's native language is also English. Its co-founders were English. But WordPress doesn't just speak English. You know, WordPress speaks <laughs> cool, geeky, white dude, American English, you know, that's what WordPress speaks. <laughs> and uh, I, I just want you to imagine for a second. So I work, work for a UK agency and it's like my top goal is to one day go and like make the side of the queen, you know, the royal family side. So I'm going to the UK and like, my CMS greets the queen with howdy. <laughs> howdy, your majesty, you know? So what do you think the queen's reaction would be? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I kind of understand, you know, howdy. All right. Um, all right, let's, let's go to Australia. Australians are like cool, more laid back, you know? How would Australians react to howdy? How would they react to howdy? I was like, hmm, maybe, maybe you meant to say something else, mate. You know, I don't even know how to say good day, but like that's how they greet each other in Australia. They don't say howdy. And uh, if you go to Canada, I was like, <laughs> that's almost as, as big as the, as the US, right? And what happens when we say howdy in Canada? <laughs> we just make Justin Bieber cry. I was like, which is... Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not necessarily it's not necessarily that that bad of a thing, but like it's it's so impolite, 
you know. All right, New Zealand. So my favorite, like one of my favorite actors is from New Zealand. So I, I just imagine how Russell Crowe would react if I go and like greet him with howdy, you know. <laughs> He's a very nice guy. You don't want to make him angry. <laughs> yeah. So there are 44 plugins in the WordPress repository that only single-handedly deal with getting rid of howdy. <laughs> 16 of them only do that. That's the core purpose why they were created, to get rid of howdy. <laughs> cool, geeky guy from Texas English. And that's why, you know, localization is super important. And even like, if the core team gets a little mad at me right now, because I know that they're really trying to make WordPress sound neutral, you know, um, they cannot. Because England has a different measurement system. You cannot win there. It has to be localized. It has to be localized for British markets. Um, so there are four WordPress locales in English. We have, in, we have the original you know, American English. We have British English. We have Canadian English. We have Australian English. And we even do have New Zealand English, where they greet you with Kiora, which is the local Maori thing, but like every person from New Zealand will appreciate it because they like their origins, like everyone that lives in a certain place. WordPress needs to speak the language of the user and um, on bo both front and back end. So it's important to be kind to the people that are using the software that you are using to build your business. This is, a, um, this is a chart from uh, Matt Mullenweg's State of the Word uh, last year in San Francisco. And it shows uh, the percentage of um, the usage of WordPress that actually people, like, people use WordPress as CMS more and more. So the green, one, the green line uh, shows how many people use it as a blogging platform. The purple line shows uh, how many people use it as a CMS. And uh, the small yellow one, which appeared for the first time in 2013, actually show how many people use it as, a application, as an application platform. So that's been growing, and like the CMS part has been staying relatively steady. And uh, it gets more professional. That's the main point of this. And um, people don't really use just so WordPress anymore. They use WordPress, WooCommerce, and a bunch of other plugins to create an uh, e-commerce shop. They use WordPress and uh, BuddyPress to create a social network. It gets more professional. It gets uh, used for larger scale sites. And that means that not only WordPress has to be localized anymore. Plugins and themes need to be as well localized as WordPress itself. So that when you get to the user, you give them an experience, a consistent experience. <clears throat> One of the main tasks of translation editors at the Polyglots team is to kind of keep a language consistent. We create style guides, we create glossaries. It is not easy to manage a translation that's done by just volunteers that just stop by from time to time to translate a string or two. So it's an effort. It's a, it's a global effort and there are more than 350 people, translation editors, that are kind of committed to that. And, uh, Pretty soon, they're going to be to have to start taking care of a lot more than just WordPress because plugins and themes are now being translated from the same place, the same translation management system that WordPress is. Translate WordPress.org gets plugins and themes. More and more plugins are inserted, and those same themes are going to have to take care of keeping a consistency across projects for all WordPress's plugins and themes as well as the core software itself. <clears throat> kind of skipped a couple of slides. <laughs> so, a couple of pieces of advice. Um, when uh, Facebook grew to a couple of billions of users, they did it for a couple of reasons. First, they made their products translatable on the front end, which is awesome, but it's hard to kind of come by and it needs a lot of development resources. But what they did more is they created the global culture. They were appreciative of 
every place where people actually used Facebook. And nowadays, people use them in more than 70 languages in, and more of 80% of the Facebook, um, of, of the people that use Facebook are actually non-English speakers. I am really looking forward to, <laughs> to the point where WordPress gets there. It's going there, it's growing steadily and more and more people are using it in, uh, in languages other than English. And you should follow. You should follow sound. If you're a plugin or team developer, invest in the Polyglot community. Go check out how we work. And like maybe chat to your local translation editors to understand uh, what would be best for you to do in order to make it easier for people to translate and localize your product. If you'd like to join and help translate, and get more acquainted. We're there for you. Go to make wordpress.org slash polyglot and uh, just say hi. We're also on Slack. We're there every, <laughs> every week on Wednesdays at uh, 10 a.m. UTC. And um, we'd love to get you started. Really love to get you started. So, I cannot read this. It means uh, one language is not enough in Klingon. <laughs> <laughs> Klingon is one of the WordPress's locales. <laughs> WordPress also will have a locale in emoji soon, so... Uh, those of you who are proficient in Klingon know that there is no word for thank you in Klingon. You know, they don't deal with, like, ordering stuff like this. <laughs> so, uh, as there is no word for thank you uh, in Klingon, I'm just going to say it in English. Thank you. <laughs> okay, WordPress is growing globally. Are you? Uh, let's follow your advice and not make uh, Justin Bieber cry. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> we have time enough. for some questions. Is there anyone with a question? <laughs> of course. I will ask you to uh, re uh, repeat the question. Repeat the question? Okay. I'll try. So, as a developer, they did reasonably well on the test. <laughs> Put it in straight. Uh, so, I have a kind of like inquisitive question. Uh, you made some examples about language. And uh, I'm curious, a uh, big thing of utilization is dates. Yeah. Uh, what have you encountered complicated or funny or interesting about localizing dates in WordPress? Uh, it takes uh, somebody that's actually aware how dates are localized to uh, to localize dates. So if you're uh, as an like if you're a non-developer and you go like and you come across a string that you don't understand, you either like copy it from original and go forward, or or you just leave it be for somebody else to translate. But um, in, Bo like in Bulgarian, dates were super screwed up in the beginning. They were, we usually follow the uh, pattern of just numeric dates. We don't use words anywhere when we uh, translate da dates. But um, yeah, we had a couple of really <laughs> weird looking uh, sites on the front end because dates are not really that easy to translate. So that's why local uh, localization teams actually have style guides and like a point how you're supposed to localize dates. It's like just a couple of symbols uh, and I don't know, I just go and use the PHP, <laughs> the PHP um, kind of a cheat sheet when I uh, have to translate dates. Um, it's not really easy for a non-developer though to, to figure that out. I can't really think of, I mean, I, I only speak two languages. <laughs> so I don't really uh, have any funny things for you. Uh, yeah, leave comments and uh, and context in while, when when you're when you're kind of adding the strings, please. Yes, uh, translators really really appreciate that. Okay, I didn't repeat the question. Sorry. <laughs> Hi. I'll repeat the question, so you can you can ask me. So, I'm WordPress, we've got translations for uh, WordPress itself. Okay. Plus, 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 
plugins like BuddyPress or WooCommerce or something else, um, you can translate with pro a polyglot, but uh, what is with the plugin repository? So, Sorry, um, what is with what? With the plugin re yeah. repository. So, uh, I would I'm a developer and I get uh, some translation from uh, the people who were using my plugin and I would like to send to, uh, to say to, uh, to them go to the WordPress, uh, WordPress plugin directory and translate it there because it's a bit complicated. So yeah, it's, there, there is going to be a little bit of confusion now with plugins getting in. Uh, the question was what can plugin developers do to uh, and how they uh, can instruct their their current translators uh, on what they where they should go and how they should translate on uh, translate WordPress. So um, plugins that are in the repository right now uh, will be eventually available for translation on translatewordpress.org. We have per project translation editors. That functionality is al already in the translation management system we are using. So you can just uh, send your, as a plugin developer, you can go to the Polyglots blog and you can request that your current translation editors be added as translation editors for your, your specific plugin. You can ask that. There's a Polyglots handbook that explains that process. There's also a template for every plugin developer for how to exactly you know, make their request so that it reaches the current translation editors and they can add your translators to the project. Um, another interesting thing is um, some, some plugins are not in the repository. That's interesting too because you know, a lot of plugins are not in the repository. Um, I would still encourage you to kind of maintain um, a community around your plugins, your translation community. And even if, you're, uh, if you have like a premium plugin that obviously you know, won't, won't get added to translate WordPress.org, um, you, can, you can just keep the translators that are translating on translate WordPress.org uh, and they, those people can be uh, your translators at your premium platform as well. A lot of plugins are doing it. So Yoast is doing it. You can uh, chat to Taco about how, uh, how they're doing it. Where's Taco? Is he here? No, he's outside in the, at the booth, but like Yoast, is one of, uh, Yoast was one of the first plugins that got a really wide international translation community around their platform. They have a lot of, they, they have almost the number of translators that WordPress has. So um, they're running their own GlobPress, like translation management install on the side. And it's something that you can, you can do too as a plugin developer if, you, if your plugin for some reason is not in the repo, if it's a premium plugin or if, it, if for some reason you don't wanna get it into the uh, official WordPress.org repository. All right. Answer your question? Yes, okay. Anyone else? I know about the mistake of using a flag for a language yeah. switch. But do, do you have any suggestion for a different symbol, different from a flag? Just don't use symbols. Symbols are tricky when it comes to when it comes to languages. They're use nice and small. Uh, yeah, they're super beautiful, but it's it's very like you will get yourself into like a constant loop of having to autom automatically update the site depending on where the user is looking at it from, right? Use, just use the name of the language. People recognize the name of the language. If you use Spanish written down, both uh, Argentinian and Chilean and uh, like um, all, all the people that are using it out, out of Spain will recognize that. If you use Portuguese, the Brazilians won't find. Like they know they speak Portuguese, <laughs> even if it's a Brazilian Portuguese. Um, keep, it to, keep, keep it to the name of the language. Yeah. Yes. I have a quick follow-up question. Um, should you use the language in English? So, for example, if my English site says Spanish, or should I say Espanol? Um, you, like, from a localizator perspective, you should always use the native name of the language. That's what people that actually don't speak English will recognize, right? Yeah, so that's the right approach. Yes. Anyone else? Okay. I think that's it. Thanks again. Thank you so much, everyone.